Lang Mineral Wells was first dammed in 1922 to serve as a second source of water for the city of Mineral Wells. During World War II, this area was Fort Walton, an army base, and after, it was donated to the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, and Lake Mineral Wells State Park was born. Because of the relatively soft rocks and humid environment of North Texas, there aren't a lot of natural places that one can come and do rock climbing. There just aren't enough tall rocks to do it on. One of the few places that there are, are here at the Penitentiary Hollow Trail in Lake Mineral State Park. The tall Pennsylvanian sandstones that are breaking off on the east side of Lake Mineral Wells make a perfect natural rock climber's paradise. In order to understand what life was like here during the Pennsylvanian period of geologic history, one needs to think a little bit about the Gulf Coast of Texas as it is today. This area was a coastal flat that drained off a mountain range to the east in what is now the city of Dallas. The Wachita, Wichita, and Arbuckle Mountains formed a high ridge to the east. Rivers that flowed from the snow melt drained to the west into the vast Permian Basin, which now forms the basis for huge petroleum deposits in West Texas. During the Pennsylvanian, here around Mineral Wells, on this Pennsylvania coastal plain, were features called deltas. Deltas are places where rivers dump into large bodies of water like oceans or gulfs. In this area, large sandstone deposits accumulated because the rivers were dumping the sediments that were eroded from the mountains to the east here into this shallow sea. Deltas are features that occur at the mouths of rivers where rivers dump their sediment load into the still bodies of water like lakes, seas, and oceans. Within a delta there are many different features that range from shales and mud flats and tidal flats that are associated to sandstones that come from things like distributary mouth bars or channel sandstones. So when a geologist comes out to an area like this to analyze the rocks, one has to know what geologic setting that we're working in. Many of the little cracks and caves like the one I'm standing in, found here in Penitentiary Hollow, are a good example of how modern geology is acting on the surface of the earth, even to this day. You don't have to be 280 million years into the past to appreciate the processes that work on the Earth's surface. For example, these rocks I'm standing in were once buried deep under my feet, but erosion has worked to surface these rocks and expose them. Gravity and water and rain, wind, all work on these rocks at the surface and cause them to break down. And caves like this are actually formed when gravity splits the rock apart along a zone of weakness and water and wind open the cavity. sandstones are actually really fascinating rocks because most people think that they actually were deposited all at once, but they really weren't. And you can see this if you come look at the rocks up close. What you'll see is that there are actually many packages of sediment here, and they occurred either all at one time, in the midst of one flood event that occurred during some storm 300 million years ago, or they occurred over a long period of time, maybe even millions of years. Many of the things that you see here are actually what we call channel deposits. They're actual bottoms of the stream channels that were flowing out of the mountains to the east. So you see a definite pattern of little packages that end and begin that go all over this area. When you look at the rocks here, it's amazing just how wet and humid it must have been here during the Pennsylvanian. The amount of water that was flowing off these high mountains to the east must have been staggering because all of these rocks are typical of rocks that are deposited in humid, wet conditions. Some of these are resultant of these heavy, heavy flood events that would have been generated not too far away. We can tell that because of the relative size of the grains in the rock. 
Large grains occur very close to their source. The further they travel downstream, the smaller they get. These are relatively coarse grained rocks, so we know they couldn't have come from very far away. And we can tell by these banding patterns, what are called cross beds, that these were fluvial or river dominated deposits. So we can use these clues to infer what the environment was like here in north central Texas almost 280 million years ago and have a pretty good idea of what it would have been like.